I love your name. That's like the best. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the beer hunter. Man, it's been with me for 20 plus years since gaming. <laughs> oh, really? I love it. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> What's happening, man? Yeah, not much. Just um, sitting here doing interviews. It's actually the first lovely day outside for about a month and a half. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, I'm spending it indoors, but it's cold as fuck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, we're, we're the opposite. It's hot as fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> brutal, dude. Uh, oh. Like, last couple of days are like, you just don't want to go outside. I had to mow the lawn yeah. yesterday, and it was just pure <laughs> hell. <laughs> yeah, these are adult problems, though. That's, I know, uh, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah, it, man. yeah, adulting sucks. But... Hey, man, it, it is good to talk to you again. I think the last time we spoke was, I'm pretty sure it was for uh, either Mask when that came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not too long ago then. Is yeah. that four years ago? Three? Yeah, yeah. Years? See, it's all... It's just <laughs> been a pandemic in between. Yeah, yeah just all, yeah, a bunch of other things happened. But, man, like, yeah. that was, that you know, that, was a, that album actually came at a really good time for me. Like, I was having hmm. a real shit time and... That that album sort of helped was one of the albums that helped get me through that oh, wow. period of my life, man. Yeah, yeah, it was really weird, man. Yeah, no, it, it's really nice to hear that. It, it's you hear every now and then uh, something like that, and I know from personal experience how music can help. Mm. You know, especially through if you're having just a shit day, sometimes everything can change just with the right tunes. You know, and right. if it can do something more fundamental or help when it actually matters then it's fantastic so it's it's lovely to hear that yeah man yeah and it's still a banger yeah it's very <laughs> empowering very empowering album that yeah Ooh. yeah it's sick but of course you know we're, we're talking about the new in flames fast forward yeah, yeah. 2023 full gone is out on uh feb 10 and i love the fuck out of this album dude man it, it's it's incredible and it's closer to your earlier mellow death sound which i love as well you know what, what inspired you guys to sort of go down that musical route again um i don't think musically we changed that much to be honest but i think that what we did was we talked about the production side of things how we wanted it to sound so we we found a way of writing that we really really like and it's basically writing for us you know and, and having that um that way of writing it gives you a lot of freedom uh so what we wanted to do was sort of get we i really really like either mask how it sounds yeah me it's too. very it's leaning a little bit towards the rock perhaps but it's very guitar oriented it's very uh, you can hear all the the picking on the strings and all that stuff and, and as a guitar player i love that obviously uh this time around we wanted to have something more leaning towards the death metal or metal so big, uh, maybe a little colder, not as organic, uh, but but big, you know, and and heavy, and that's sort of the, the few words we used to describe how we wanted the mix to sound. And luckily, we um, uh, Joe Rickard, who who mixed the album, he's he, he knows us pretty well because he played drums with us for a couple of years. So yeah, yeah, just yeah. saying those few words, uh, he understood us. And it turned out really, really good. We we're super happy. Everybody was working towards the same goal, obviously, having Howard and Mike and uh, his whole team um, knowing what we wanted to do and what we wanted to aim for. And also, they know how we write, you know. So it was more a matter of of getting the the sound right, I think, than than getting the songs right. It's the hardest thing to do, man. Sometimes, and how yeah, it could be, agree, yeah. you know what I mean. But when you nail it, well, this album sounds phenomenal when you turn it up. And you draw. Uh, yeah, oh. I mean, I'm super excited. And I'm very proud of it, and, and and really, really proud of everybody working on it because it was. We weren't really planning on making a record, you know. It, we had I the mask, and we barely started. Uh, we basically started touring. Mm. We came all the way down to New Zealand, and then every, the world shut down. So we went down there and had a lunch and a couple of drinks, and then flew back home again. It's a long fucking way for a lunch, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so Man, yeah. Sucks. Yeah. So and and so we weren't really done touring with that. And that's sort of I, I think the whole writing process was really 
relaxed in that sense because we already had an album that we wanted to tour on. And as soon as the pandemic uh, loosened its grip uh, in a way, you we could see shows happening. And, um, you know, we, we knew that we don't need to push this album. We have an album to tour. We continued touring that even though we had recorded um, for Gone. And uh, so it was just a matter of getting the right sound and getting the right songs together. We knew that we could release a song here and there. Uh, you know, we, we'd been sitting on the record for a year um, and I haven't been stressed about it because we still had I the Mask to tour. So it was it was just a it just worked out really well. We, um, as I said, we didn't really plan on making a record, but it felt so good meeting up with the guys after a two year mm. break, involuntary break. And uh, I think it was Anders idea. Let's just go over to the U.S. and, you know, sit in a house and write and enjoy the weather each other's company and meet up with the other guys and the producers and, and see what comes out of it. And we did that in uh, right before Christmas, well, three, four weeks before Christmas in 21. Um, and it felt really good. So we came back after the holidays and, and finished up and it turned into a whole record. It's pretty right. cool. Yeah, that is yeah. cool. And you got Chris <laughs> yeah. Broderick now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the lineup we have is, uh, it, it's incredible. I, we've never sounded better. And it, it, it it doesn't, I mean, cast a shadow on anybody who's played in this band because I've been very fortunate playing with some of the best dudes out there. You know, it's been an incredible journey. I learn every day, and now we just seem to to get better and better. And it's it's incredible to play in this this band and having Chris, Bryce, and Tanner mm. extremely good at their instruments. Uh, it just makes the live shows so fun, and having Chris. On the tour bus means I have my like mentor slash um, guitar teacher on the road with me. So I've, I've never played as much guitar as I do now. And, and all these things are super positive, obviously, and makes the live shows fantastic and, and the most fun part of being this band. Because you did a bunch of touring last year, hey? With yeah, that. surprisingly enough, it was a very busy year. We, we expected it to be kind of calm, you know, world opening up there might be a few shows a small tour we tried to do some of the stuff that had to be postponed because of the pandemic uh but in the end i mean we managed to record for two months uh, in the us in la and we did 120 shows so it's it was quite a busy year <laughs> after all yeah, yeah that's awesome man and, and the tracks so far that have been uh you know released for the album have just blown up man like was it 1.2 million views like uh state of slow decay which i think it's two, yeah. no, 2. 2.2 for that man it's it yeah pe people insane. seem to like the videos patrick is doing a, a killer job i mean patrick Elias, who's done some of these videos and he's been with us for the longest time he's been yeah, with yeah. Us for 20, 20 years you know so um it's it's really really fun to have that kind of attention obviously and still, we haven't we haven't even released the record. We haven't really started touring on it yet. So it, it it feels really really good, and it seems to resonate with a lot of people. I think the fact that that it has that it's leaning a little bit towards that uh, death metal or or metal production, I think, yeah. sort of made people listen to it with different ears because I, the writing is not very different. You know, the, the way of catching the melodies or doing that or that riff or the, doing the big chorus it it hasn't changed that much but then again you have to remember this is all in my head this is an yeah. ongoing journey <laughs> yeah, yeah. for you guys uh it's it's like a, a stamp in time every time we release something it feels like wow this is brand new but in my in our heads it's just been ongoing so it's a development basically but but yeah it, it, it's fun it's a lot of attention and people seem to dig it and that that um promises uh, really really good live shows in the future and i'm looking forward to that how how, how did the new ones go what's that sorry let me rewind that it's a bit late here friday night i'm not i'm not a, I'm drinking <laughs> water on a friday night and i can't even talk properly let me rewind yeah. that one but um oh you are too unless that's vodka and then i'm yeah but it's, it's um, like midday here <laughs> i haven't warmed up yet <laughs> But uh, how'd the new ones go on the run run of shows? Like, how, how was oh, the response live, man? Yeah, they, they fit perfectly. And we've so far chosen to play some of the faster stuff 
yes. um, because it's a lot of fun to do that live, obviously. Uh, it brings a great energy to the live set. Um, it, it, the funny thing is it fits really well into the live set, the new songs, and it fits really well alongside some really old stuff from Just Grace or Horacle, uh, and still um, more than 20, almost 30 years later, the newer songs fit together with that. And that's pretty, it's pretty fucking cool if you ask me. Yeah, man. You know? I love it. It's so good. And it, uh, of course, I mean, the album cover is kind of like a yeah. classic album cover too. I've got to get yeah. it on vinyl, man. My, my record plays. Oh, yeah. Like, that's that's, that's the whole point with it. That That's absolutely the point with it. And that's, it comes from the way that we, we always made records. We never did like singles or one song here and, we, we try to make a record and, and the journey needs to be complete, like the first track to the last track. And that also includes the visuals. That's how I listened to records when I was growing up. My dad's record collection was all the Sabbath records, but Purple, Whitesnake, Dio, Rainbow, Maiden, Judas, and all that stuff, you know? So looking at those covers, especially the Dio covers, it's my, Dio's my hero. Oh, you know? I love it. So all the Dio, like the early... Even the rainbow stuff, but mostly the deal, like Holy Diver, Lost in Line, those in particular were watching those, looking at those covers on the vinyl while spinning the 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 the, the album. It's just it took me to another level. It's like one plus one equals sixteen. You know, yeah. it was just that amount of input I got. So it, it's extremely important, and I think that Blake Armstrong, who's been with us for for quite some years now. Uh, doing the, all the artwork, um, the fact that he's part of this in such a, I don't know, it's, it's in a in a very fundamental way, he's part of it. He gets to hear the demos, like the rough demos. When I'm sitting there creating or starting off songs, he's there already listening to it, talking to Anders about concepts and ideas, what, what Anders wants to talk about. Uh, and that's that's why it turned out so good, because he has a great understanding and also gets that visual vibe. He needs that visual to it. So it, it was. It just worked out really, really well. I'm super happy about it. Talking about visual, though, I saw that there's the graphic novel with the. I mean, look at me. Mm -hmm. One of those. I'm, I'm yeah, the, yeah, yeah. 40, I'm the forty year old virgin that That's it's got grandkids. But um, you, the action figure, uh, the just head action figure with the graphic novel. You know, that's I, I got yeah. to have it. But yeah, yeah, and, and that's for us nerds, right? It it's literally for us that that see that connection and really think it's it just enhances the music, right? And it Blake has been part of or a big part of creating a, a, like a whole universe around the music yeah. and the characters and the stories. Uh, so seeing that in a like a comic book setting with the action figures and everything, it's it's incredible. His um, imagination is. Yeah, and skill set is just incredible. Love the guy, and we we all do. So we have a great working relationship with him. Do you want to take that further though? Because I think the yeah. the jest head character and the you know the the mascot could open so many doors visually, like you know with movies and you know you already <laughs> done it, but you know Netflix. Well, still, I, you got to remember. You know, I'm like a guitar player still, so I'm not a director, I'm not a writer, I'm not a, <laughs> no. You know, but I but imagine. I mean, if it could inspire something like that, that that is incredible. Obviously, as I said, it's like I think that combination of the different media just brings on a synergy effect. That's it's just yeah, it it just takes you away um, totally, and and having the opportunity of inspiring people to do stuff like that like blake with the stories and and um, with, with the comic books and other people helping in um jumping in on the projects and then having their inputs is it's just uh, such a creative um what do you call it we've just become such a creative um not a company it's like a friendship fellowship if you will you know it sounds really nerdy but and, and out of that comes all these different ideas. And, and we don't really know where it's going to end up, but we're open to any of that, that, that feels right, that, that has the, the inflames um, uh, feel to it, and the story is right, and, and visuals right. So, yeah, anything is possible. I mean, 
there's been talks about anything from I can't say too much because oh, some of this material. Yeah. But, it, but, but yeah, I, I think a person like you and me, judging what I see in your background, see a little bit of He Man, Asokatan, yeah. all these like um, action figures, that you, it will be right up our alley. Let's put it like oh, that. Nice. Because I think it really fits. Yeah, most of these. Oh, Evil Dead back there too. That was nice. Oh. Nice in the, in the background. I've got a, yeah. My shrine. I've got a shrine to Bruce Campbell right here. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, dude. Robocop and yeah, I'm mm. I'm as I said I'm all about it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's an incredible room I have to say. Nice. I'm I'm glad you like it because uh, yeah I won't even get into that. But <laughs> 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 yeah, you gotta have your space. You gotta have your space. But um, of course, uh, Australia, not fest coming up, bro. Like finally, yes, yeah. Yeah, crazy. we're so excited. It's like, as I mentioned, right before the pandemic, we were in, um, New, we came all the way to New Zealand. We were supposed to do a couple of shows in Australia as well. Mm. But the whole thing just went tits up, obviously, with the pandemic. So, um, and we've been wanting to go there for quite some time before that. So just imagine how much <laughs> we're looking forward to this. And it's a great opportunity. It's a couple of festivals that we do. Uh, hopefully, there, there might be some other shows for us as well. But mainly the, the cool thing is that we get to play in front of a bunch of people that, you know, may or may not have gotten an Inflames ticket, which means we're going to play in front of a lot of people and just showcase who we are and, and uh, show them what we're good at, you know, having fun doing it. Well, the lineup's incredible. I mean, it's not only international bands like yourselves and Slipknot, and, but we've mm-hmm. also got, you know, some of our, our, our locals as well. I think we're running out of a bit of time, but... <laughs> Uh, I'm the worst. Yeah, but are you aware of some of those bands like Alpha Wolf and and Void of Vision? Uh, these are bands Hot that Plane. I mainly these are bands that I mainly read about or heard Anders speak of. I'm I'm kind of you remember that uh, record collection I talked about my dad's record collection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I listen to still. Oh. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. But Anders is the opposite. He's constantly searching and he's got his ear to the ground. He knows a lot about it and obviously a lot of that trickles down to me as well um so I, I always it's always awesome touring because i get to to hear so many new bands i i'm not actively looking but he is so yeah. i get to fed all this and and some of it sticks uh, i can't really place any of those bands right now but i'm very sure i'm going to see some of them on the festivals and and live is the best way of experiencing bands because that's when you know if they're actually as awesome as they sound on the record or not you know, so that's going to be really exciting. Looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Like North Lane and like all those mm-hmm. bands, like they, something's going on in Australia on an yeah. international scale at the moment, which is really exciting for us. You know, yeah, yeah. that with the world, it's like these bands are just going out. And I remember seeing them on small stages. And I guess it's mm-hmm. the same for you in reverse, you know, but yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think that's sort of how it started out here too. And and a lot of the bands in the US that you now see are really big or being the prominent bands in, in the genre, they started out the same way, you know? Yeah. Small tours in the beginning and locally and then eventually international touring and and it's awesome. I have to mention one band from from Australia that I would love to tour with that I haven't had the opportunity yet, but it's Carnival. Oh, I yes. really like Carnival. And that's one of those bands that Anders introduced me to. It's, it's them I actually listen to quite a lot. So it's, um, yeah. So there are really good stuff that I actually know about in the in Yeah, the that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, they're really good dudes too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know them? Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, not personally, but I've I've met them a couple of times. And they're really mm. nice people. And it's, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, they seem to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool that seeing Australia get out there and, and there's. Absolutely. Yeah, at the Absolutely. moment. But we're, we're keen to see you guys. Very, very yeah, yeah. It's You should see all of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be so good, dude. All the beers, it's going to be, it's long. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Obviously, yeah. with the moderation, yes, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll be in Brisbane anyway. But uh, yeah. apart from oh, that, cool. you hinted at something else before that you said you couldn't really talk about. But what else, what else have you got coming up? you know, beyond that for in flames, what's, what's something we can look forward to 
more touring, I guess you look taken over. Yeah, the- for sure. I mean, that's that's where I think we, I have the most fun, at least, is on tours, you know, and, and getting up on stage, playing music with these fantastic musicians uh, in front of awesome people. You know, it, I can't really explain it in any other way, you know, so that's really what I'm looking forward to. Um, what festival season is almost, well, a few months away. Mm. Um, and that's something I really, really like because then I get to see a bunch of friends and a bunch of bands that I'm curious about and bands I haven't seen for a while. So that, that's a really exciting time for me. Um, we have our own festival yes, um, up in uh, Dalhalla, which is fairly up north from here in August. And that's going to be a two day event. So lots and lots of really cool bands that we want to bring there, bands that we we curate basically the the lineup ourselves. So we get to pick and choose. Hopefully the bands want to play there that we want to have there. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, d- d- touring, touring, touring. That's the plan. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, in the meantime, though, man, Foregon is out on – February 10th. I, I remembered that this later night. Yeah, yeah. Well but, uh, I, I'm lucky I've heard it. And it's, uh, man, you guys out there, you you out there have no idea what you're in for. It's it's, it's incredible. <laughs> but, uh, bro, we, I'll see you in Brisbane at Knotfest. In the meantime, take care and uh, go forth and kick ass, my friend. Will do. Thank you so much, man. I'll see you in Brisbane.